What Allah has prepared for us in the Jannah, no one can imagine. Simply because the human imagination thinks from his observation. You cannot imagine something you did not see. So in paradise, the Prophet ﷺ told us that all the inhabitants of paradise will be 33 years old and they will never get any older. In Jannah, there are rivers of pure water. There are rivers of white and luscious honey. There are rivers of pure milk. And there are rivers of wine. Wine that does not cause intoxication. Wine that tastes like wine, but doesn't have the effects of wine. In these gardens are trees and shrubs and foliage. There is no desert in Jannah. Jannah is a garden in paradise, in English it's a garden and in Arabic as well it is a garden. Kawthar, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is a river in Jannah. It is a river in Jannah in which its banks, the banks of the river, are made of domes of hollow pearls. Its mud is musk. Its pebbles are pearls. Its water is whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. And around this river, there will be birds with, with necks, and the Prophet ﷺ said, like the necks of camels. They'll have long necks, and they will drink from this river. And another narration which is also authentic, related on, one of the, the, uh, on behalf of one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, ذكرنا, ذكر, ذكر لنا, He said, indeed, it was mentioned to us that the distance between the distance of the doors of paradise, Arba'ina sana. 40 years that in the paradise there will be no sweat no bad smells nobody has to take a bath nobody gets older nobody gets tired there is no wounding there's no bad words nobody has to work there's no labor nobody has to pay for anything everybody has their own palace a palace the palaces themselves, the Prophet ﷺ told us, they have bricks made of alternating materials, not just one material. One brick made of gold, another made of silver, yet another of coral, yet another of pearls. Inside these palaces are chairs, muttaki'een ala sururim makrusha. They are sitting in chairs of silk brocade upon them. And as for the Hud al Ain, the wide eyed female companions of Jannah, the whiteness of their eyes is exceedingly white, and the darkness and any dark features that they have will be exceedingly black. They have never been touched before by any human or any jinn. So they are all virgins, they are chaste and modest, limiting their glances only to their husbands. Fruits will grow inside your garden that you just call the fruit and it bends down and gives itself to you. Everybody will be served. Nobody will have to cook or get up and clean and wash and do dishes. Everybody will be served. All the inhabitants of Jannah, they get together in a place, Suq al-Jannah, the market of Jannah, and Allah appears to all of them and they look at Allah and he speaks to every individual faces will be bright illuminated because of the Iman looking at Allah Azza wa Jal the inmates of paradise will clearly see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like they see the sun on a cloudless day or like they see the moon on a cloudless night 
and in the hadith found in Bukhari and it is found in Muslim the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the inhabitants of Jannah enter Jannah Allah will ask them all he will say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us ask the Muslims, the Muwahid, the Mu'min, the Muhsin he's going to say is there anything I can give you more? Imagine being asked that question by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came one day upon his companions. And he told them, raise your hands and say, La ilaha illallah. So they all said in unison, La ilaha illallah. And they said it a few times. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he raised his hand and he said with them, La ilaha illallah. Then he said, Alhamdulillah. Allahumma ba'athani biha. Yani bihadihi al-kalima. Wa amartani biha. Wa a'atani biha al-jannah. Oh Allah, you sent me with this La ilaha illallah, this statement La ilaha illallah And you ordered me with this statement La ilaha illallah And you promised by this statement Al-Jannah Allah created heaven Jannah And a Muslim lives a life Not only in fear But a life between hope and fear We live in hope, hoping that Allah will forgive us And give us mercy and we enter that everlasting dwelling in Jannah, paradise. And we fear Allah from doing sins because we remember hellfire. And we ask Allah to save us from hellfire. And so a Muslim lives a life of hope, a life of hope raja, and khawf, fear of hellfire. I want Jannah. When you wake up in the morning, when you sleep at night, right? So what do you do? You occupy yourself with that which leads you there. When you want to go to a travel, certain distance, uh, beyond your residential area, what do you do before you go to sleep at night? You pack your bags, you get ready. Likewise, we are getting ready. We are traveling to Jannah. And you say, I want Jannah. So what do you do? You pack the bags as well. You prepare the food, the drink, the clothes, the action. That will get you to Jannah. It's simple. As-sabiqoon, as Allah says, and those who can beat other people. In what? In good deeds. To beat each other to paradise. To beat each other in high places in paradise. No, a normal Muslim does not want just the first place in paradise. A mu'min wants to beat everyone and go to the Firdaus al-A'la. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, Tamanna was'alu al-Firdaus al-A'la. When you ask Allah for Jannah, ask Him for the highest place, which is called al-Firdaus. Because these are the qualities of the believers. The believers are sabiqoon, musbiqoon, yatasabaqoon. They always race each other for goodness. No well. No children, no status, no friends, no authority, no power would benefit you except يقول الله من أتى الله بقلب سليم except those who will present on the day of Yom Al Qiyam will present on the on the day of Yom Al Qiyam a pure heart. So what Allah would look into on the on that day is the quality of your heart.